The topic of this video is summation notation. We use summations to find the sum of a sequence or series. When we are writing using sigma notation, there's a lot of pieces that get put in place. So let's break it down and understand each part. So the first part we want to talk about is the capital Greek letter epsilon. It is called sigma. Um, it's the capital letter S and they, so we're going to use it to represent a sum. So Greek letter sigma, and we're going to use it for summation notation. The next part of summation notation is the lower limit. It's this part right here. Oops. It's this bottom part right here. This k equals 1. What that means, the lower limit, is where are we going to start? So what number are we going to start with um, when we're finding the sum of a sequence? Which term number are we going to start with? The next thing we want to take a look at is the upper limit. And this is important because it tells us where we're going to stop. So what term number in our sequence are we going to stop with? The last part we need to take a look at is the argument. So what's the rule that we're using um, for our sequence? Um, and this is typically explicit rules that we're going to be working with. It's going to be an expression that we're going to use, that we're going to add with. So to understand this more, we'll take a look at some examples. But whenever we see the letter K, we're going to plug in a number, like evaluating expressions. So we're going to evaluate the argument, starting with the number 1. And we're going to go through all of the numbers from 1 until we get to um, the number n, whatever number um, our sigma notation tells us to stop with. So let's take a look at an example. Here are some just basic no sigma notations, um, and we're going to break it down together. So to start us off, we want to take a look at the one here on the left. So the bottom part, j equals 3, that um, is our lower limit. That means I'm going to start by plugging in number 3 to get the third term of this sequence. Um, that's going to start my summation. The last thing we're going to look at, or the next thing we're going to look at, is the 6. That's the number that I'm going to stop at. So I'm going to plug in the numbers 3 all the way until I get to 6. So that means I'm going to have to plug in 4 and 5. The other part we're going to look at is our argument. Okay, It's the expression that we're going to be working with um, that's going to tell us what we need to be adding or how do we use the 3 and the 6. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to take that 2 and I'm going to raise it to the third power because that's the number I'm going to start with. And I'm going to add that to 2 to the fourth power. I'm going to add that to 2 to the fifth power. And then I'm going to add it to 2 to the 6th power. That's where I'm going to stop because of what my sigma notation says to stop with. Now I'm going to evaluate each of these, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, and so on. So 2 to the 3rd is 8, 16, 32, and 64. Now I'm going to add those all together. And when I calculate that all, I get 120 as my final total. So again, the 3 is where I started, the 6 is where I stopped, and then the 2 to the j power, that is my argument, that's the expression I use to add. Okay, let's take a look at this next example on the right. Okay, here I'm going to use the variable n in my expression, so I'm going to start by plugging in 1 into um, my expression, because that's what it says to start with. And then 4 is where I'm going to stop. And then I have this fraction as my argument. That's the expression I'm going to work with to um, calculate the sum. So let's go ahead. Here's where I start by plugging in 1. And I'm going to stop when I get to 4. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So here you can see I started by plugging in the number 1 into that um, denominator of this expression. And then I plugged in 2 
3 and 4, and I stopped at 4 because that's what my sigma notation told me to stop at. Let's go ahead and simplify these um, fractions and figure out our summation. So I went ahead and simplified the denominators, and now I'm going um, to add these fractions together. And one thing that I'm going to do is, especially if I'm using my calculator, when I'm typing these fractions in, I want to make sure I'm typing them in using parentheses to make sure that my calculator gives me the correct answer. So when I type this in, um, my decimal gave or my calculator gave me an answer of 0.8, which is equal to 8 tenths, or I can reduce that down to 4 fifths. So my summation is 4 fifths. Now take a look at these three different um, sigma notations. See if you can calculate the values and answer the following questions. Now, Parentheses are so important with sigma notation because they actually tell us um, very different pieces to our argument and it changes the way we actually calculate the summation. So it's important to notice your parentheses. So let's take a look at um, this first example. Now what happened is we still start down here with n equaling 2. And we're still going to stop here with this one at 7. But my argument, my expression that I'm being added is different than the one on the right because of the use of parentheses. Now what this means for us when we're calculating it is that when I'm doing my math, I'm going to do 4 times 2 squared plus 2. Then I'm going to take my next value and I'm going to plug in 3. So I'm going to do 4 times 3 squared plus 2. And I'm going to go all the way up to 7. So here you can see that I wrote it all the way out showing you how I plugged in 2 because um, that's where I started into this entire expression. And then I went all the way up until uh, my summation notation told me to stop at 7. So now when I go through this to simplify before I make my summation is I'm going to do 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 2 is 18. Then I'm going to add that to 3 squared, which is 9. 9 times 4 is 36 plus 2 is 38. Okay, and I'm going to continue this pattern on um, doing 4 squared. Uh, which is 16, timesing that by 4, which is 64, and adding 2, which is 66. I'm going to continue that through the rest of my expression. So there are the rest of the values, 102, 146, and 198. Now I'm going to add up all of those values in green um, to get my final summation, which is a to grand total of 568. So it's very important to notice that in my argument, my entire expression that's wrapped around these parentheses need to be included to calculate the total um, before I add them together. Okay, so it's important um, that I take care of those parentheses. Now what I want you to notice that's different between the example on the left and the example on the right is on the right hand side I have this plus 5 that's not included in my parentheses. That means that this plus 5 is going to be added at the end. And I'll tell you what that means, or I'll show you what that means um, here in just a second. So really what I'm going to do is notice that right here, this 3n, that's my argument. That's the expression that I'm working with for adding. Um, so I'm going to start with 1. And I'm going to go all the way up to 8. So here's what that's going to look like. Watch. What I'm going to do is start with, hold on, I want to use a different color. I'm going to start with doing 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2. 
I'm going to go all the way up until I get to 8. Okay, so here I did it. I got all the way up to 3 times 8. Still, I haven't done anything with that plus 5, but I'm going to go ahead and simplify that multiplication. So I'm going to have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. Now those are the values that I'm going to add together, Okay, the ones that I just wrote in black. And then at the very, very end, after I add all of those numbers up, that's when I'm going to add that plus 5. So let's see what we need to do. We're going to take the 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12, 15 plus 18 plus 21 plus 24, and then add 5 at the end. Let's see if we get the right grand total. So when I take all of those values and I add them up, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, I get 108. Now I'm going to add the 5 to the end to get my really big grand total, which is a total of 113. Let's take a look at some um, more with the use of parentheses. So here I want you to practice your um, with parentheses looking for what you need to start with, where do you end, and where your parentheses are within that argument.